absolute teacher at heart. Um, and I love being around little kids and the youthfulness in this room, whether you're 90 or eight, um, is amazing. And I want to do something that we do with the kids in the classroom, just a little bit of a chant. Um, it helps the kids keep something in their mind. Um, we've got a big announcement that I'm going to be making. Um, right now I want to do a chant to have all of our minds um, keep it in there. Um, so we're going to do a little chant. So repeat after me. Ready? Na, na, na. na, na, na. I said, na, na, na. Na, na, na. You're the first to hear. That things have changed. We got a new name. We're going to say it together. Sprout up. Sprout up. Sprout up. Awesome. Our brand new name is Sprout Up. We'll be running the rest of this year and the rest of Sprout Up's life as Sprout Up. So you've all said it three times and it'll be in your minds for the rest of tonight and the rest of time. Um, it looks like we got a crowd full of rock stars and I want to give a big shout out and thank you to the amount of rock stars that have touched my life over the past three years. Um, I want to say thank you to Sprout Up's board. I want to say thank you to um, all of our regional directors, Riley Leonard, Riley Hubble, and two amazing people in this audience, my mother and father who are here tonight. Thank you all so much. Um, and I also want to give a huge uh, thank you to two people that have stood with me since day one and uh, should be standing right here together with me, um, Tanya Haravian and Nick Allen, who are here in the audience today, too. Thank you, Tanya, and thank you, Nick. Um, so I've been told this week uh, from another number of different people about stories of David Brower. Um, and I've been told from a number of people that when he met individuals, he would look them in the eye and he would say, what bit you? Why do you do the work that you do? And I want to share with all of you what bit me, the same way that I would have loved to share that with David Brower if he were still here today. When I was 17, I worked at a surf camp. And I began work one week and had our owners of the surf camp come up to me and say, Ryland, we have a special um, project for you this week. You're going to work one-on-one -on -one with a developmentally disabled child. Um, and I thought to myself, OK, here we go. Uh, another fun project thrown in my lap right before, uh, right before the camp starts during the week. Um, and we started the week. And on the first day, we took a walk down into the water. And when we walked down the water, we were holding hands. And as I took a step and my toes hit the water, my hand fell behind me, and he stopped. And he was a little bit timid and scared. But through role model and mentorship and care to the child, um, that I was his friend and someone who um, he could trust in the water, um, things started to turn around. And when we walked out of the water on the last day, we were holding hands. And this time, when my toes hit the sand, my arm fell back again. But he ran back out into the ocean rather than onto the beach. And that was so special to me. But what was even more special was I was throwing all the boards into an old Cheeto truck that we called our surf mobile. And um, his mother and father slowly walked up to me. And they said, Ryland, thank you. Our child has never been so present with us before. And that really taught me that when you teach one, many people are affected. And I went off to UC Santa Barbara and began to teach environmental education to second graders. And on my last day, I was walking out, and I reached for the door handle. And one of the eight-year-olds named Elizabeth was so excited, um, she jumped out of her seat and ran up to me. And she grabbed on the bottom of my shirt. And she had big Coke ball glasses and these huge buck teeth. And she said, Ryland, thank you, and gave me a big hug. And that was the moment that I knew this girl's going to go home, and she's going to talk to her parents about what she learned in class, whether it was water conservation, composting, recycling, using reusable bags, um, the toolkit to being the next generation of environmental leaders. And it's going to inspire her parents to do the same for her as she grows older. Um, I've taken this uh, understanding that when a child can speak confidently and knowledgeably about a topic, 
many people listen um, to heart. And with a team of amazing individuals, um, this year we will be teaching 4,000 children, activating 250 college student volunteers, and growing to teach in six cities in California. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to do it all without costing public schools a single penny. Um, but in my eyes, that's not enough. That's not nearly enough. Um, and I want to take tonight, in this moment, with all of us, to make a commitment. Um, Sprout Up has committed to teaching 14,000 children in multiple states by 2015. We are ready to do this, and we've expanded into five cities so far, and our model is proven, and schools love it, and the kids love it even more, and we're ready to take it on. If you believe that when one person teaches, many different people learn, and that youth can be the most powerful agents of change in a community, I would like to invite you to check out our brand new website on November 20th at www.sproutup.org. And join me in teaching the next generation, whether that's your son or daughter, or your friends, to take a second to think about the beauty of our world and how much it gives to us and give back to it. Thank you so much.